Good morning, folks. You've likely heard a lot about the sudden stratospheric warming splitting the polar vortex in two. While this is one of the most severe stratospheric events that can take place, it has been happening more regularly. In fact, they're using Eurasian snow cover to predict these events nearly a month in advance. The important part is that it will bring a much, much colder end to the northern winter. Coastline of South America, hundreds of dead pelicans, hundreds of dead dolphins. The Peruvian government has ordered an investigation. I'll give a link for this and another map on NOAA's Environmental Visualization Laboratory. Our drought is continuing. No major quakes, but we had a 5.4 in China and a moderate shake in New Zealand not long ago. Spot of good news here, maybe a little too late in Fukushima terms, but hey, got to applaud the notion. 30 degree positive temperature delta in Canada this time of year means there must be a big blue low pressure system sucking warm southern air up the leading edge and pushing southern U.S. weather north of the border. Top Euro weather story is how northeast and Russia is getting Arctic weather dumped on them and southeastern Europe is getting warmer Mediterranean precipitation. We got snowstorms north, flash flooding south. While no official cyclonic systems have been named, the area to watch is off Queensland coast and they're going to issue a warning soon, I imagine, as this appears ready to develop significantly. Check back in the coming days. No gamma bursts in 17 days, that's quite the stretch. Cosmic ray density is coming down off yesterday's peak, which still was not all that concerning. As the first CME was a day away, this was released and initially expected to hit last night. Then it was revised to essentially join with a faster blast behind it and strike together Sunday. It just didn't happen. The big one is still coming, but that middle wave has hit. Around 1200 UTC yesterday, the triple delight of temperature, speed, and density spiked in the solar wind and endured all day and into the morning UTC. Middle of the chart shows that 1200 UTC impact inducing resonance that lasted until this morning UTC. May have gotten momentarily out of control in the middle there. Let's watch quiet turn to chaos on the magnetic field simulator. It's tough to argue with this evidence, especially since auroras exploded across the globe last night. I'll speed through the enduring pressure and slow down as we approach the new day UTC. Right around this time is when the GOES magnetometer takes a dive for the floor, and the energy flux of our planet wavered as well. Do you see the red on the magnetic backside? That's our magneto tail reconnecting from impact compression and surging the energy back to Earth instead of away. Yesterday we saw a surge directly from the sun through the footprint. Today we see it through magnetic reconnection. FYI, that does mean the big one set to just clip us is still on the way. Center you will see a small electrical arcing area develop. It is a new sunspot group that popped a C5.8 flare yesterday and actually managed to get some small ejecta out of the corona, small CME. Earth off to the right there in stereo B. The departing Leviathan tried to say goodbye but may have to try a bit harder today. Couldn't get the surge particles to a mass exit despite the beauty of the surface instability. Mercury has passed the sun. Normally the quake watch would end, but we got space weather coming and a large opening in the umbral magnetic field set to face Earth in the form of that dark coronal hole. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.35 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.